A bead on a circular loop. A small bead can slide without friction on a circular hoop that is in a vertical plane and has a radius of 0.1 meters. So you can see this is our circular hoop or loop. The hoop rotates at a constant rate of uh, 4 revolutions per second about a vertical diameter. So it's rotating around this uh, vertical diameter. Find the angle beta at which the bead is in vertical equilibrium. It has a radial acceleration toward the axis. Part B, is it possible for the bead to ride at the same elevation as the center of the hoop? So it, is it possible to ride at the center of the hoop? What will happen if the hoop rotates at one revolution per second? Okay, so uh, there is no friction uh, in this uh, hoop. And uh, you can see that because the hoop is rotating at a constant rate, we have a uniform circular motion. So uh, we, I'm going to start by noting that First, note that the bead performs uniform circular motion however I have to be careful with the radius of the uh, uniform circular motion performed by the hoop so this is r prime as you can see here uh, so this is the radius a radial distance r from the center of the hoop however at equilibrium at this angle beta this uh, bead will be performing uniform circular motion together with the hoop here and the radius corresponding to this will be r sine beta okay so r prime will be equal to r the actual radius of the hoop times sine beta okay so let's start with part a part a was asking us the angle beta at which we have vertical equilibrium so i have to draw a free body diagram uh, for the bead and identify all the forces acting on the bead. Uh, now you can see that uh, we have uh, the weight of the bead pointing down and because it's in physical contact with this hoop there will be a normal force acting towards the center of the hoop. So we can uh, model the bead as a particle. It feels the weight mg mass of the bead times g and then it feels a normal force n which is pointing towards the center now what does what angle does n make with respect to the vertical axis you can see here this is the vertical axis if this angle is beta this angle will be also beta so um, making an angle beta with respect to the vertical axis. <clears throat> now, uh, this is the vertical axis, y-axis, y. And uh, you can see that because it's performing uniform circular motion on this axis with this center, the radial, the outward direction is to the left. So I'm going to put the r-axis to the left. All right. And since I have equilibrium, net force on the y-axis should be equal to zero. So n component on the y-axis, which is n cosine beta, will be equal to mass of the bead times the gravitational acceleration g, so that the normal force is mg mass of the bead times g divided by cosine beta. Now on the radial axis, net force on the radial axis will be, as you can see here, because the radial axis is this horizontal axis in this case, the component of the normal force on the radial axis, which is a pointing towards the center, so it is minus n 
sine beta in minus r hat direction, which is equal to minus mv square divided by r prime, the radius of this uniform circular motion. All right. So if I substitute here, uh, the minus signs will cancel because they're both pointing towards the center. Um, the normal force was mg divided by cosine beta. So I will have mg sine beta divided by cosine beta. This is equal to uh, m v square over r prime. Now we're given a certain uh, frequency of revolution, four revolutions per uh, second. So I, I can write this uh, v as um, 2 pi r prime over t or 2 pi r prime f for uniform circular motion. So this will be m times 2 pi r prime f square and v square divided by r prime and the masses will cancel and uh, i'm going to obtain tangent beta equals uh, 4 pi square r prime square but there's an r prime at the bottom so it will be just r prime so 4 pi square f square r prime and then i have a g here which has to be taken to the right hand side so this is going to be divided by g all right so uh, at the same time r prime is related to r it is r sine beta so i can substitute that here so it's 4 pi square f square r sine beta divided by g which is equal to tangent beta which is sine beta divided by cosine beta okay so uh, basically i can uh, write here cosine beta is equal to um, g over four pi square f square r, or uh, beta is equal to cosine inverse g over. 4 pi square f square r that's one solution uh, and i note that if i have the beta is equal to zero so if i put zero here this will be zero this will be zero so theta equals uh, or beta equals zero is a solution or uh, if i put 180 degrees here also this will make this side zero this side zero so there's another solution coming from sine beta which is beta is equal to zero degrees or beta is equal to 180 degrees. So if I substitute the numbers here for the cosine beta equals g over 4 pi square f square r solution, beta is equal to cosine inverse g 9.8 meters per second square divided by 4 pi square f square. So I have a four revolutions per second so that's four hertz uh, multiplied by itself gives me 16 and r the radius of the uh, hoop was 0.1 meters so this is multiplied by 0.1 so that gives me 81.1 degrees so um, the three solutions I obtain here are beta is equal to 0 degrees, 180 degrees, and 81.1 degrees. All right. So, uh, in 
In part B, is it possible for the bead to write at the same elevation as the center of the hoop? What would that mean? That means the, the bead will be here, so this angle will be 90 degrees, right? So is beta equals to 90 a solution? That's the question. Uh, so in part B, uh, if I put beta is equal to 90 degrees, which means r prime is equal to r sine 90 or r prime is equal to r and you would obtain cosine beta equals g over uh, 4 pi square f square r and uh, you can see that um, this is not equal to cosine 90 because beta equals to 90 would be the solution cosine 90 is uh, 0 so uh, beta equals to 90 degrees is not possible all right so my answer is that it's not possible well it's not one of these solutions beta equals to 90 degrees is not an allowed solution um, part c what will happen if the hoop rotates at one revolution per second so let's look at what happens then so if i substitute uh, for this solution where cosine beta is equal to g over 4 pi square f square r 9.8 divided by 4 pi square 1 hertz times 0 0.1 1 hertz squared this actually gives us 2.41 and since cosine beta function is a function that is bound by minus 1 and plus 1, this does not give a solution. So this is not uh, possible, right? So um, this cannot be true. This does not give a solution. Then the remaining solutions would be R beta equals to 0 degrees or beta equals to 180 degrees. These are both possible uh, solutions. However, I want to uh, show you that if beta is equal to 180 degrees here, so if this bead is riding right on top of this uh, hoop, um, as soon as you kick it just a little bit to the left or to the right, it will fall to the bottom, right? So this is a metastable solution. Actually, the stable solution is when beta is equal to zero degrees. So it's at the bottom of the hoop. So that would be the stable solution. So I can note here that uh, this is the stable solution. This one is a metastable solution uh, because it's as soon as you kick it a little bit from this uh, angle it, it's going to fall down so probably you would uh, never be able to see this uh, solution uh, working because it's almost impossible to keep it exactly still here so uh, even for thermal fluctuations for example you would see that this is going to fall down. So uh, the good solution here is actually beta is equal to zero degrees. All right, so let's summarize. Uh, we have a bead on a circular uh, loop or hoop. Uh, it can slide without friction on this hoop and it's in a vertical plane. So we have gravitational acceleration G pointing down here. is our G and um, 
it rotates at a constant rate, 4 revolutions per second, which means it's performing uniform circular motion about this vertical diameter. And we want to know the angle beta at which the bead is in vertical equilibrium. And you can see that it has a radial acceleration toward the axis, so it's going to be moving on this circle with a different radius, r prime, which is r sine beta. <clears throat> is it possible for the bead to write at beta equals to 90 degrees? And what will happen if the frequency is too low, was the question. So first I have identified the forces acting on this bead. The mg pointing down, the normal force pointing towards the center, it gave me a vertical component and cosine beta that is balancing mg because I have vertical equilibrium, mg over cosine beta is the normal force. As for the uniform circular motion, um, I have n sine beta responsible for the centripetal mo uh, uh, motion, centripetal force, and v square over r prime, where r prime is r sine beta. And you can see that if you substitute for n mg over cosine beta, and for r prime r sine beta, we get this equation. Now, if beta is not equal to 0 degrees or 180 degrees, the sine betas will cancel. If, the, if it is beta equals 0 or 180 degrees, you will have 0 equals 0. So 0 and 180 degrees are solutions. On the other hand, if it is not 0 or 180, these guys cancel, then I have cosine beta is equal to this quantity g over 4 pi square f square r. If I substitute for the frequency 4 hertz, I obtain 81.1 degrees as one possible uh, solution for this. And to answer the question, is beta equals to 90 degrees possible? It is not. As you can see here, it's not one of these solutions. If I have beta equals to 90 degrees, cosine beta, cosine 90, has to be equal to 0. And this is not going to be 0. So it's not possible. Uh, beta equals to 90 degrees is not possible. <clears throat> so... Uh, only if f goes to infinity, I guess, you can get zero here. So in the infinite frequency limit, uh, it's a limit, basically, that you would obtain. But uh, generally, it's not possible for a finite uh, f. So I can say that for a finite uh, f, it's not possible. For f equals infinity, it's, it seems to be the case. Now, if the frequency is too low, on the other hand, uh, as you can see, if frequency is 1 hertz, cosine beta gives me 2.41. So that means this is not a solution. The only remaining solutions are 0 degrees and 180 degrees. But I've noted that 180 degrees is, not, is a metastable solution because if you have thermal fluctuations even, this can slide down to the bottom right away. So that's the stable solution. Beta is equal to 0 degrees.